This is Twit. I have shock and astonishment fatigue in a really big way. When this first got started, yeah, it was new and interesting. Now it just kind of comes tumbling out, you know, week by week by week by week. And it's, it's a little bit like being pecked to death by a duck. It's little and goes on and goes on and goes on. I, for one, am a lot more afraid of Google and Facebook than I am of the NSA. You know, I know what the NSA wants and what they're likely to do. And unless you believe we're about to be taken over by a new generation of Nazis, which I suppose is possible, the information is relatively safe against being used against you and me. What is missing in Edward Snowden's narrative is lots of bad things happening to ordinary people because of all of this. On the other hand, Google and Facebook follow me around wherever I go on the internet to deliver me ads and stuff, mostly for things I really don't care about and only clicked on once. So I, I, would, I have a piece posted that says maybe Google needs an Edward Snowden to tell us what Google is really up to more than the NSA needs more Edward Snowden. Well, it's an interesting point you brought up, and, and, uh, and I think that um, uh, you know, the fact is that yeah, there, there are two components to this. The first is, what am I afraid of personally? I'm not doing anything wrong that I know of, that I can think of offhand. Maybe I am. Who knows? Uh, and um, I have got nothing to hide. I'm not a drug kingpin. Uh, I'm not a terrorist and so on. So what do I have to hide from the NSA? But the same goes for uh, other for, uh, Fourth Amendment protections <clears throat> and other constitutional protections. I mean, if I have nothing to hide, why, why should there be, why should the police requ uh, require a, a warrant to come into my house? Why don't they just come in? I mean, I got nothing to hide. So there's that argument. So, so there's a political component that is about containing the power of government, the reach of government. We've we've noticed, uh, we we've heard this week that the CIA is actually uh, messing around with the Senate's uh, servers, uh, deleting documents, uh, reading things that they're not supposed to be reading, and that's a, a, a pretty clearly, if if the reports are accurate, a gross. Uh, violation of the separation of powers. Oh, I think Senator Feinstein, if what she's saying is correct, and I have no reason to believe that the narrative isn't basically correct, is on to something that really matters. Finally, we're on to something that really matters. Uh, the bad guys have changed the rules. The world has changed. What the founders imagined is not what we're experiencing today. You know, I said a long time ago that if you want to read my email, that's great if it will keep sarin gas out of the Trans Bay tube under San Francisco Bay. Fine, read my email, have a good time, run it through your virus checker to make sure I'm not a terrorist. That's cool. But I do think the issue of the CIA not living up to its agreements with the Congress for oversight, I think that's a much bigger deal than most of what Edward Snowden has so far reported. And I wish Senator Feinstein the very best because, you know, previously she said our brave men and women of the NSA are doing a great job. We shouldn't be afraid of them. Now she comes down and says, but yeah, there are times when bad things happen. And I think that's a fairly balanced view of what's been going on. She was all in favor of it when they were just hacking you and me and not so much in favor of it when they started hacking her. Uh, different organizations there, of course, uh, but still uh, same basic concept. Uh, now, you know, the... The larger issue, I mean, you, you touched upon the, uh, the, the central sort of uh, controversy, if there is one about this. I mean, I think the vast majority of people are largely against the kind of mass surveillance. The difference being whether, you know, the difference between surveillance and mass surveillance is that with mass surveillance, it's essentially a hunting expedition. You're, everybody's a suspect until, you know, potentially. So let's just, uh, let's just harvest all the information, find out if people are up to no good, use this harvest information or metadata or whatever it is they're gathering, in this case using malware uh, potentially, uh, and and sort of testing to see whether uh, people are guilty or not. That's the kind of the opposite, if you think about it, of regular surveillance, where you have to have serious probable cause, you have to have good reason, you have to have, you have oversight, usually judicial oversight, where a judge has to say, yeah, look, they look pretty guilty, why don't you, here's permission to go check it out more. With this, 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 uh, this mass, you know, this, this, the whole point of this uh, program that we're talking about here today, uh, with the malware, is that it's done on a massive scale. Of course, ma malware has been around for a while. The U.S. government has done some amazing, uh, technically amazing things with malware, especially with Stuxnet and so on in Iran. But, but again, there, there's a difference between targeting suspects and suspecting everyone. Those are very, very big. But there's also the point that. 
if you don't have the information and the resources in place when something awful like a bombing at the Boston Marathon happens, you can't suddenly go get that information that if you're not collecting it and have it in a library where you can query it and say, well, we now have a suspect, we now have probable cause, we now have gotten a warrant from whomever, or maybe it is happening in such real time that you're gonna have to get the warrant 24 hours, 48 hours later, as is provided for in some laws. Now, who is this guy talking to? Who did he get off the phone with yesterday? Where has he traveled? Who are his friends? Is this really a bad guy? Probably not. Or is it the bad guy? And if so, how do we catch this person? And I think that, you know, you look at an emergency and when an emergency happens, suddenly people are saying, do everything you can to catch those bad guys. And they don't really care what surveillance took place. So I think we need controls. No question we need controls. We need warrants. We need oversight. We need meaningful oversight. But we also need the ability to collect the library of data that we need to query to find out things in a hurry when something bad happens. Very quickly, is Edward Snowden a hero or a villain? Edward Snowden is a traitor. Okay. Edward Snowden, I think, should be shot by a firing squad. Okay. It's his watch. He stopped being a watchdog when he started telling bad guys how we do things. Okay. I, I disagree with that, but I don't think he's a hero either. I think he's neither hero nor traitor. I think he's a bit of an opportunist, but I'm very, very glad that he did what he did because I think we really, really need to know this stuff. And of course, The Intercept is a great source for that because this entire site has been devoted to, uh, to writing news stories and pouring through the documents. Uh, to write stories like this. And of course, we can't have oversight unless the public has a certain amount of information. So uh, so I'm in favor, certainly, of The Intercept. Um, I'm on the fence about Edward Snowden, but again, I'm really glad that he did what he did. Well, can, can I ask you something about a previous, uh, something a previous guest said? Yes, please do. Just Did, did I hear correctly about, uh, say, that um, they thought Snowden should be tried and shot? Uh, Dave? Uh, David? Yeah, uh, yeah, I probably, that's a bit of hyperbole, but I think jail and treason would be an appropriate charge. Yeah, I think the charge has been filed, actually. Uh, I mean, I just, I, I find that kind of incredible, like that, that someone called for him to be uh, shot or... or well, that, uh, is what we, that is what we do during war times to traitors. Okay. We are at war. Information that's been released appears to be of value to our enemies. It is possible that it is probable that American forces have been placed at greater risk because of this information that's been revealed. It's not just watchdog stuff. It's not just you know, I mean, spying honestly, I think on you Americans. I think that's nuts. I think that's totally nuts. But uh, you know, you're certainly entitled to that opinion. And, and, and you as well. It's a, it's a great world. Yeah, I think he's done a valuable service. I think that's a completely bananas opinion. But well, here's an. Uh, um, and I appreciate you chiming in on on that topic as well. It's it's hi obviously highly controversial, and uh, and uh, of course I think I think that uh, again I think the majority of people in this space uh, in technology journalism would probably uh, agree with you, Matt. But uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, we wanted to have David on in this because there is another sure. point of view there.